from the Pacific Coast of Canada. This is Pacific.ca. Featuring this time Professor John Holloway, author of several books. One of them titled Change the World Without Taking Power. And the latest one, Crack Capitalism. Here is John. So, uh, John Holloway, in 2002, you wrote a book with the title, which actually catch my attention, Change the World Without Taking Power, uh, where you explore the meaning of revolution. More recently, though, you have written another book, Crack Capitalism. The word crack can be interpreted in many different ways, but in essence, what is your political idea behind this title? Well, I think the, the, the two books really start from the same problem. And that is that we're, we're kind of in, um, in a dilemma. We're in a situation historically where the revolutions of the 20th century appear to us to have failed. Because most of us think that the the revolutions of the 20th century failed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we're, we see that capitalism is actually getting worse and worse, that there's more inequality all the time, that there's more destruction all the time, that um, it's much clearer now than it was, say, 30 years ago, that if we don't change the system radically, then it is quite likely that we will all be destroyed. I mean, that simply we are destroying the conditions for the existence of humanity. And in, in that situation, then how on earth, what, what can we do? And, and how on earth can we think, think about it? I mean, I feel we have to come back to the question of revolution. We can't let it die because in a way our future, our hope depends upon thinking of, of a radical transformation. But we can't think of it in the way that we did before. So what, what I do in the book, the first book you mentioned, the one, Change the World Without Taking Power, is to say, well, we, yes, of course, we have to take, think about revolution, but that we cannot think of it in terms of stake, taking state power. And that the way that anti-capitalist movements are going at the moment, then more and more they're just abandoning the idea of organizing themselves as a party. And... Of, of taking state power. So they're trying to think about radical change in different ways. And then, of course, you know, that stirred up lots of, lots of discussion, which is terrific, um, about the meaning of revolution. And people said, well, yeah, fine. You know, that's exactly what, what we've been thinking. But then if we don't do it through the state, how on earth do we do it? And in the way that the second book, Crack Capitalism, I suppose, is, is an attempt to um, answer that question by saying, well, let's look at what people are actually doing. And if we look at what people are actually doing, it's not that they're, not that they're trying to build up a party. It's not that they're trying, it's not that they're thinking of change in kind of incremental ways, but more and more people are saying, well, we will try and break here and now radically with the logic of capitalism. We are going to do things in a different way here and now. In other words, they create what can be called, can be seen as cracks in the domination of, of, of capital. Cracks in the sense of kind of spaces or moments where we try to create a different way of doing things, a different way of living. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes these cracks are kind of very spectacular. I mean, the one that I, I suppose I always think of, I mean, partly because I live in Mexico, partly because they are just so amazingly articulate, is the Zapatista uh, uprising, which of course was in, in January 1994 and still going strong. And if you go into Zapatista territory, you pass a sign always that says, bad government, stay out. 
here the people rule. In other words, in other words they're create, they are creating and have created a space where the people themselves take the decisions, take the decisions about education and health and um, community organization and justice. And they're building their, their, their own world within this area. But are, are they creating their own government and didn't they come up uh, to the state that where they are now through a revolution, which you're talking before? So they, they took power of their own government. It's not the Mexican government, but it's their own autonomous government. And, and, and they did it through a revolution. Well, I, what, I think you have to make a, a distinction. You know, we use power in two different senses, don't we? We use power as meaning power over. You know, if I have power, then I can tell somebody else what to do. Or we also use power in a different sense, as mean, meaning power to, power to do. You know, I have the power to, um, I don't know, cook a good meal. If we do it together, then we will feel collectively our power to, to cook something lovely. No? In other words, there's this idea of power as well as a collective power to organize ourselves and achieve what we want to achieve. Now, traditionally, the idea of taking power refers to the first. You know, if we take over the state, then we are able to exercise power, we are able to tell people what to do, we are able to change the world in that way, at least that's the way, that was the traditional idea. If we think of power in the other way, as something that comes from below, as something that expresses our capacities, our abilities, then it's really a question, we will all to get, get together, we will all organize ourselves and do things in a different way. And if you look at the Zapatistas, it's very much in this latter sense. In other words, it's a, it's a, a movement of power to, against, power over. To autonomy rather than to oppress others. Uh, can you explain uh, the difference between abstract labor and concrete labor? Or I, I understand you also term it concrete doing. That's right. Well, in, in the second book, in Cracks, what I try to do is to follow um, these, all these movements that, as you say, are sometimes called autonomies or autonomous movements. Um, to look at, at, at lots of those movements and see how, in fact, these kind of movements to take control of the world occur in all sorts of places and all sorts of ways um, on all sorts of scales, both big and large. Now, and one way of thinking about those is to say, well, the, the centre of these movements is really the attempt to determine our own lives, to shape our own lives, to shape what we will do, and not just to do things because that is what the system tells us to do, because I, not because the law orders us to, or because that is the only way to earn money. Okay. Now, you can, in a way, you can think of those two, that in terms of two different two different forms of activity, two different forms of doing. A doing that we, we do simply because we have to do it in order to survive. Mm -hmm. Or a doing which we do because it makes sense to us, because that is what we want to do, either because we enjoy it or just we, because we think it's important. Mm -hmm. Now, what I try to do is to link that to the traditional Marxist dis distinction between concrete labor, which is really just a, a doing that, I suppose, that we do something that we do because it makes sense, and abstract labor, which is the <coughs> form that that concrete doing takes in a capitalist society. Now, in a capitalist society, we, okay, fine, we do something, but the, because of the way that it is integrated into the society, um, because we have to sell our products or we have to sell our labor, our labor force, mm -hmm. then we lose control over the sense of what we're doing. 
So you can see these autonomies in a way as the revolt of concrete against abstract labor, or you can see that as the revolt of people who are trying to exercise a control over their lives, trying to, 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 to shape their lives in a way that gives it meaning to them. Yeah, uh, a lot of people like myself feel trapped in the capitalist system because how will we pay the rent? How will we pay for the food that we buy in the store? Uh, how can we stop this enslavement to our activities to abstract labor? We depend on it. It's, it's perhaps not impossible, but it's very difficult to get out of the system. It is, for, yeah, I think that's absolutely the problem. I mean, we do feel, feel entrapped. We have to find some way of paying, paying the rent, of paying, paying for food, of looking after our children or whatever. And yet, you see, the extraordinary thing is that even in that situation, people look all the time for a way of, 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 of breaking out of the prison, don't they? They look for a way of trying to give sense to their doing. So, I mean, if we've never actually met apart from this interview, but I see you dedicating your time to community radio. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, I imagine if you were thinking simply in terms of capital and simply in terms of money, then that probably is not what you would be doing. Mm -hmm. I imagine that you actually yeah. do that. Volunteering, yeah. So, like yeah, maybe one you, third of the you, population in most North America, most American population is uh, doing about one third of their labor as volunteer. Okay, well, that's precisely in a way what, you know, it's a way of saying, okay, well, capitalist work isn't actually what we want to do. It isn't mm. actually what gives meaning to our lives. So let's try and find a way out. Let's try and find a way of, of, of doing something that does give meaning. Autonomous but, from the capitalist system. Independent think, of, yeah. Yeah, independent of the capitalist system, and in a way, either explicitly or implicitly, implicitly as a revolt against the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. Because we know as well that the type of work that the system obliges us to do is constructing a world that is destroying us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what, you know, what you, you get more and more, I think, is not just in terms of volunteer activity on the side, but also you get people who either because they have no place at all in the capitalist system, which is true of a, a never increasing number of people in the world, or by because of their own political decisions saying, no, we won't, we're not going to go that way insofar as we possibly can, we are going to dedicate our minds to, to constructing somebody else. So, sorry, constructing something else. We are going to dedicate our lives to, to breaking the system. Mm -hmm. And in other words, build a new system? I think yes, and build a new system, absolutely. Tell me, um, what, what is the purpose of society behind the political st state, the structure of the state? What is the purpose of society and uh, behind that structure of the state and be behind the economy? Economy, uh, some people call the invisible hand, that almost a personal thing, economy. We can't do this because of the economy. We can't do that because of the economy. What is actually the purpose of society behind all those things? I think the purpose of society is, what is, is really something that we go constructing, isn't it? I mean, it's not that there is one purpose to be laid down, but if you if you can you look at people's struggles, if you look at what people are doing, then I think people go spend their lives, in fact, trying to, to find a purpose or trying to construct a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got words for that, haven't we? We've got words like love, for example. We've got... Um, considerations as well, like like worries, I suppose, like the future. I mean, if we go beyond how the way we are going, then what on earth is that going to mean for our children, our grandchildren? Therefore, our purpose should be to break that logic and construct something 
that, that mice work. Mm. Based yeah. on social consciousness or something like that. 